Jennifer on the show with your girl Sheila O, and this is How Far. How Far Now? How you all doing? Hope you all keeping safe. Hope you all social distancing. Okay, having that hand sanitizer with you everywhere you go, it's really, really important. Okay, guys, really keep safe. But today, I have a very special guest, all the way from West Africa. He's a comedian, a producer, a director, a writer. He began his career all the way in 2007, I believe. And since then, he has written several sitcoms, organized very popular concerts with A-list international artists, popularly known as Bovi. Well, he began his stand-up comedy, Bovi Man on Fire, in 2013, which he has hosted in Nigeria, at the O2 Arena in London. He's done tours here in America. He's done global, y'all. Bovi, how far? I do. I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm good and I'm excited to be here, man. Bobby, what's in your cup? My cap? Your cup. What are you drinking? Coffee. Coffee. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. Bobby, let's get right to it. Thank you so much for being my guest here on the Afrozone Show and the How Far series. So tell me, Bobby, how is comedy received in Africa? Okay, so the thing is that comedy has come to stay. People love it because it's our way of telling our story. Um, comedy has evolved over the years in Nigeria because in the beginning, it was very animated. It was... Okay, I wouldn't really say it was animated in the beginning. In the beginning, it was about storytelling, you know, telling stories and saying, oh, this is what happened. And then in the end, people will laugh when you get to the punchline. Uh -huh. Then it evolved into animated comedy, people telling stories primarily about poverty, things people have been through, and, you know, just coming up with um, stories that were not true, but basically they helped to convey the message right. of what the people were going through. Uh -huh. And then over time, it has evolved into telling your story as regards your personal experiences as relatable to most Nigerians. Mm -hmm. That's what comedy has evolved into. And in the recent months and years, it has also morphed into now telling stories that not just Nigerians can relate to, but mm -hmm. the entire world. Yeah. You know, people from all walks of life can relate to that, thanks to the internet making the world a global village. Mm -hmm. You know, so we now have comedians in Nigeria who tell stories that not just Nigerians can relate to, but Americans, Europeans, Asians, they can basically relate to. So, yeah, that's, I, comedy has been very um, dynamic. Dynamic, well received. Okay, that's what's up. Right. So how are you surviving this war on COVID? Emotionally, financially, physically, how are you surviving? Because obviously there are no live shows. I know the cities are opening up gradually, but how have you been um, getting the paper? Emotionally, it's taking its toll on me because I'm 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 um, a mix of uh, I'm a hybrid of a deep introvert and an, and a very expressive ex extrovert. You mm -hmm. understand? So okay. the fact that I had to stay indoors was dry. It's been driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. But thank God for my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. I, you never really get bored being with yeah. your family. family. You know, so even if you get bored, all you need is one hour to detox and then you're missing them again and you mm -hmm. want to be with them. So it has helped me to bond with my family more. Financially, yes, it has taken its toll in the sense that when you judge by the figures, by how much you make on a weekly mm -hmm. or monthly, mm -hmm. it was drastically cut off. Yeah. Right? I think I have done only three events in the last three months primarily because those events they had to record for tv right without an audience yeah so yes financially it has affected but thank god for the fact that i already had a um, presence on social media platforms like youtube and i had content i used to put out on youtube uh so my income didn't drop rather it went up right. as regards Streaming. what i earned from online yeah. presence so my income went up there but generically my income dropped however as regards the online space it came up because we had more people going to watch us 
online since they couldn't see us live, you know, and uh, since they couldn't see us perform at live shows. So, yeah, that's what's okay. up. That's what's good. Okay, so uh -huh. Bobby, you're no stranger to acting. In 2007, um, you had your own series. I think it was called Extended Family. Uh, you also acted in a movie, uh, which is your true love. So, which is your true love? In, no, you acted in a movie. No, no, hold on. Let me get this right. You acted in a movie called Her Day. It's right? Her Day. It's Her Day. So now, what I want to know is, which is your true love? Is it acting? Or is it being a stand-up comedian? Artistically, I'm polygamous by nature, which means I love stand-up comedy and I love acting. That's a good I one. I also love writing. I also love writing a whole lot, you know, because I've done two sitcoms and, and then my online series, Back to School, making mm. it three, and I wrote all of them. And they've all been successful. They've all been hits. Thanks be to God, yeah. you know. So I really can't pick one of them because i can't substitute mm -hmm. i just i make love to my writing on monday make love to my acting <laughs> on tuesday make love to my stand-up on wednesday polygamy. okay i'm very polygamous <laughs> by nature you know i i love them equally and it helps me because they're all intertwined right. you need to be a good storyteller to be able to do stage you need to be a good storyteller to True. be an actor True. to trans to you know, to to translate and a story basically, yeah. and um, transport that story by dramatizing it. Right. You know, so I really can't pick one, but I think I've reached that point of comedy where I'm getting bored. Uh -huh. So I want to I want to reach out to a wider audience, which is not just Nigerians or Africans. I want to reach out to all races so while i'm working on that i'm like okay now is the time to focus on the movies right. which is where i actually started mm -hmm. you know and i'm going to show the world that i have what it takes to to be the denzel yeah and, the tom, actor. and the tom hanks <laughs> all of the above <laughs> the future <laughs> bobby what is the concept behind bobby man on fire Bobby Man on Fire is, a, is basically a woman stand-up show. It mm -hmm. was supposed to be a one-off title, but we we when we studied the Nigerian market, mm -hmm. we realized changing the title might be might might be counterproductive in the sense that what they are used to hear is that one title and you run by it. It's not like the US where Kevin Hart does uh, a laugh at my pain and a uh, grown little man and let me explain and um, what's the last one he did. Um, you have to tell me that one. I'm more into Dave Chappelle, but I love them all. But uh, the me. last one Kevin Hart did was uh, uh, the irresponsible talk, right? Okay. Yeah, Dave Chappelle did Sticks and Stones, did the yeah. other ones, and all of yeah. them. I love Dave Chappelle as well. You know, so what I'm saying is, what standard the standard practice is comedians name every special by a different name. Right. I mean, their name is a constant, but there's something different. Based on what they want to talk about, the thing they want to run with, that's what it's named. So when I did the first Man on Fire in 2013, the next mm -hmm. year, 2014, I wanted to change it. My promoter said, no, you can't do that. You have to run by the same it's name insane. because the first one was so successful. Yeah. We don't want to have to start again to sell the product and say, yo, the person who did Man on Fire is the person doing Bovi, Naughty by Nature, in 2014, <laughs> for example. So yeah. we ran with Man of Fire 2013, 2014, 2017, yeah. and 2019. But I made it clear in 2019 that that was the last one and that was going to change the title moving forward. Okay. All right, that's what's up. Bobby, have you ever experienced a night of no laughs? When I say a night of no laughs, have you ever been in a position whereby you told a joke and the way you rehearsed it in your head wasn't the feedback you got from the audience? If you've ever yeah, been in that I, kind of position, how did you bounce off from it? When I bounce started, back? when my career started, I had those moments. Mm -hmm. Primarily because I used to be very scared. But right. what I now realized was that you can, a joke can be funny, but the comedian can not be funny. Mm -hmm. So if a joke is funny, but the comedian lacks the charisma, to carry you it. know, the mm -hmm. stage presence, the candor in his delivery and all, people will not laugh. You get so, yeah, I had those moments a few times, but 
I spent my entire life preparing for my career as an entertainer. So those they were far and few between. Mm -hmm. However, when they happened, because I always prepared the script, I always prepared what I was going to say. It was easy to say, oh, they didn't laugh at this, so I moved on to the next one. You get that mm. was that's just has been my approach, and um, okay. it has worked for me. But if I want to co measure the number of times my jokes fell flat to the number of times my jokes succeeded, I think it's three percent or mm. probably two percent of them falling flat, but ninety-seven or ninety-eight percent of them connecting with the people because. Tired. It's not, you know, comedy is not only about generating a laughter. When people are not laughing, you need to be so intense and so interesting that they are patient with you and they are yeah. listening to you and what you're saying. Right. And that's, that's one method I've always applied. How, how do you, um, how have you managed copyrights? I mean, how are comedians protected from intellectual property rights or plagiarism? You know, people copycatting your jokes. Does that exist? Can you copyright a joke? To be honest, I don't know, man. And that's because <laughs> of the... That's because of the... Uh -huh. The prostituting nature of... Hey, comedy, hash word. Let's go. Of, <laughs> it's, it's because of the, the, prost, the prostituting nature of... You know, a prostitute cannot be loyal to one customer. Basically, right. that's what they sell. So comedy is such that if I say, oh, I met a girl, Sheila, and... Mm. Um, me and Sheila had a one night stand, for example. Mm. Someone can pick up the same joke and say, I met a girl, Nicole, and me and Nicole had a one night stand. Now, you know it's your joke, but he's tweaked it mm. in the big. So, in the mm -hmm. beginning, I used to fight comedians who used to tell my jokes, mm -hmm. right? But it's, uh, it, it, I don't think you can copyright jokes. Right. You can claim ownership to a joke. But it's hard. It's very hard because of the flexible nature of storytelling. And nobody, that story that drops in your mind is dropping in probably 10 other people's minds worldwide. So there will just be slight differences. For example, comedy has evolved to the point, like I said earlier on, where you, you tell jokes based on what's happening in society. Mm -hmm. And how do we look to relate to you personally? Right. You get my point. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell a joke about COVID-19, for example. Chances are there are 10 to 20 other comedians who will tell a similar story because it relates to them. So mm -hmm. you can't really fight it. You just need mm -hmm. to be good with your delivery of those jokes. You understand what I'm saying? Totally get it. it you you have to you have to carve your niche mm. so the way you tell your story is what will make you stand unique. out yes right It'll make yes. you unique absolutely you know so i don't know if if people can copyright jokes all well and good because what's so annoying is when somebody copies your joke verbatim um another thing that can, that can be very annoying is when somebody copies your joke verbatim and then takes it to the next level by making it more interesting so it's two <laughs> things that video. making you angry why <laughs> one you copied my joke two you made it better than the way i said it <laughs> you know. now netflix netflix okay doing great things come they've come to africa they've been there doing a lot of stuff for nollywood and stuff um is there a netflix comedy series or netflix comedy special done by any west or east african i know there's been in south africa is has there been any for west or east to the best of my knowledge i don't think there's any yet there was a comedians of the world that featured mostly south african comedians they lumped them together and um, it's a good thing for the industry especially when uh, for africa mm -hmm. right but Presently, there's none. Before the pandemic, uh, I was in preliminary talks with um, aggregators who were like, oh, okay, you need to record a special because they seen me perform and they know that I can hold my own for yeah. roughly an hour an to hour, one hour, 20 minutes, um, right? Uh -huh. But they was like, oh, you need to record it and then we'll market it to Netflix. And I'm like, no, 
you need to let Netflix know there's somebody who can give them what they want. An original. You That's know, right. because I'm an original. I don't want to make content uh, um, and they would say, oh, okay, yeah, you have your content, bring it. Let's mm. see. Is mm. it good enough? Mm. Because that's where the negotiation starts. Yeah. And then I'm used to the big check now. <laughs> and I don't want a small check no more. No. <laughs> you get the point. But yeah. uh, post-pandemic, post-COVID, we just might have to see how we can tell our stories comedy-wise without the audience and sell it to them because one thing i do know about netflix is that if the content is good they will buy they'll buy it. they will buy it, you know if the content cuts across they will buy yeah so we are hoping to get to that point especially because when you consider the nigerian comedy terrain what makes our comedy very interesting what brings out the juice is, is the pigeon english yeah but the world don't understand pidgin english and then you record in pidgin english and do subtitling it takes away the juice yeah of the joke if you have to read it you get my point mm. so as comedians what we're now trying to fine tune our presentation skills and see how we can uh, you know tell the jokes in english in a way that it will be funny not just to the world yeah. But to our our primary base, you don't lose your indigenous base, yeah. My indigenous base, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's what we're working on now, and hopefully, I'm I'm not in a hurry, man. I just want to make sure, like everything I've done before, mm -hmm. people connect with it. You know, I'm not um, about quantity, which is yeah. the money, for example. I'm about quality. I I want to make. I want to touch people's hearts, yeah. not just their pockets. I want to touch yeah. their hearts, you know? Because if okay. I touch their hearts, <laughs> I'll touch their pockets deeper. Straight away. <laughs> Straight away. Bobby, who are your US and UK, um, you know, style influences? Like, you know, who are the people out there? I know we mentioned uh, Kevin, we mentioned uh, Dave. I mean, who are, where do you drive your inspiration from, from your international counterparts? I mean, you're international, but you know what I mean? Those in the Western world, like, who are you influenced by heavily with comedy? Uh, okay, I'll answer that question in two parts. Okay. First off, first off, mm -hmm. every comedian who has decided to hold the microphone has influenced me one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Every single comedian. I don't just learn from comedians who are good. I learn from comedians who are bad. Some comedians yeah. can be so terrible. <laughs> so I learn from them how not to be terrible. Not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I learn from them how not to goof mm -hmm. on stage. I learn from them how not to be boring. And then for the comedians who are funny, it's tricky because I also learn from them how to connect to my audience but not try to be like them. I try to be as original as possible. Having said that, the people who have touched me emotionally the most yeah. on an international scale Richard Pryor, mm. Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Right? I Solid. Mean, like I said, the others have touched me from the Kevin Hartz to Eddie Murphy to Chris Rock to Tiffany Haddish. Haddish. Tucker, uh, Chris Tucker. To name it. Benny Mark, mm -hmm. Chris Tucker, Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. I all, I, um, Ricky Jabez. Yeah, I love, I love all of them. Gina Yashere, I there are so many. Gina's of dope. course, there are so many that are not as popular that I love. Yeah, their style because I'm not just a, a major actor in comedy. I'm also a consumer of comedy. I love to be an audience member. Yeah, you know, to enjoy what comes with it. Also, yeah, you're your first that, customer. That, mm -hmm. And then the late Benny Hill. Mm. The British Ben Hill. That's what's up. Yeah. I loved him right from when I was a kid. And my mom aided it, unknown to her, because I remember saying, Why are you so crazy about this guy? She said, Because when he gets on stage, he doesn't need to say anything. And I'm already laughing. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I Deception. got some Ben Hill as a okay. kid. 
It's time for the segment called Talk the Talk, okay, Bovi? So America is fighting a war right now of racism and police brutality, which we're taking really, really serious. We're out here marching, all sorts happening, you know, standing up and speaking up for ourselves. What is Africa currently fighting? I use the word current because I know Africa be fighting things every day on the regular, on the regular. But what are you currently fighting right now in your territory that you want to speak on? On top of fighting talk? COVID. We're fighting COVID-19. <laughs> We're fighting COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I mean, this virus has made us realize that nothing else really matters yep. as much as staying alive and staying together and being there for each other to make sure we survive you know life life is the most important thing yep. we have we have fought corruption for years we have fought nepotism for years we have fought uh tribalism and all that you know mm -hmm. but for me what's most important is recognizing that it's blood that flows in our veins yeah i mean um a a b plus mm -hmm. b positive right mm -hmm. and um if i needed blood today it wouldn't matter if the person is from my village or my state or my country mm -hmm. or my race yeah. if his blood matches mine or her blood matches mine it would work. they will give me to save your blood. life uh -huh. right to save my life so I think the most important thing for us is to realize that we are all human and um, our, our backgrounds doesn't really count. Don't matter. What's most important is that uh, we are relatable as human beings by blood, you know, okay. and by, by language. Okay. Sorry. What's next for you, Bobby? What's next for you? What should we oh, look I'm out making for? Movies this year. Okay. I want to make a movie this year and this decision didn't come because of COVID-19. I, <laughs> I was going to say, is it, COVID, I, is it COVID no. that decided this no. factor? I made my first movie in 2015. It was oh. released in 2016. It's going to be it's going to be on Netflix next month. Awesome. Uh, it's her day, you yes. know. And that's four years ago since yeah. it was released. So I'm taking my time basically because like I said, with my comedy, I just don't want to join the bandwagon to say, oh, we've got to make money every year. You know, I, I want to get it right whenever I do it. I'm a passionate person. Mm -hmm. And if um, anything is going to hinder the quality of what I want to make, I will rather not do it, you know? So when I made my movie in 2016, I had my hitches. I had so many problems along the way mm -hmm. and i'm like okay i don't want to make the same mistake twice i want to get it right this time i want to make it better than what i have done before that's right so i'm going to be making movies and um my online series will continue and uh i'll make more new online series yes basically and i also will find out how to make it special the good thing about the pandemic is that we're gathering all our materials. So yes, content. To, if, if, if the world can get out again on that one hall, all well and good. I'm ready to give them what they like. <laughs> okay, Bobby. Okay, let's play a quick game and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go and get busy. I see you're having fun already. Okay. This game is called What's Your Slang? All right, so it's for people that are coming to your territory for the first time, territory now being the giant of Africa, being Nigeria. What are the first four slangs you would advise them to learn so they can communicate They can communicate with anybody from the airport to, to wherever else? What are the first four major Nigerian slangs you're going to put out there for anyone who's watching the AfroZone show how far now to pick up before they come into your turf? Go. What's your <laughs> slang, Bobby? What's your slang? Okay, I'm not okay. First thing I'll tell any foreigner coming to Nigeria is to learn how to say what's up. What's up in Nigeria is how far. How far? Yeah, you know, so when you say how far, don't say oh about two kilometers. No, how far <laughs> basically means what's up. Yeah. And then I will teach them I do I do means I'm good. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then when they see something that's impressive, that they like, I'll teach them to say, Mado. <laughs> <laughs> Cardi B, Mado. Mado, Mado. <laughs> and uh, for the fourth one, ah, what would that be now? Ah. What if police stops them? What should they say? How should they act if the police stops them? Cops, whatever. What do you say to a cop? How far? How far? <laughs> say how far again, right? What's up? Yeah. And the, okay, so I've given three things they will do, uh -huh. or rather, three things they will say. Okay. After those three things, uh -huh. this is I'll give them one thing they should know how to respond to, which is when they tell you, bless me. <laughs> <laughs> When they tell you bless me or shake body, that means you need to let go of some cash. <laughs> you just start praying for them. Know, basically, yes. <laughs> or your boys are lawyer. When you hear things like your boys are lawyer, <laughs> or I hear, you see, I think I've dropped about seven basically. <laughs> so, for payday. Bobby, you are such a great star. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on how far. I've been wanting this interview. It means a lot to me to have you. And uh, thank you for just spending time with us on the AfroZone show. We really respect you for that. Thank you so much, thank fam. You. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey, what's up, my people? Forget <laughs> that smoke is coming out from my mouth. I just want to let you know you're on to how far the number one online show this is where you get to know everything that's going on around the world, especially through the eyes of African entertainers. How far?